Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> this is Paula K. Bronte, your master rapid eye technician. Welcome back to Tuesdays with Paula. Our topic today is chronic illness. I have worked with several people that have autoimmune diseases and different kinds of chronic, repetitive, cyclical illnesses. Um, in fact, when I was in Seattle, I worked at a, uh, a internationally known clinic for naturopathic medicine. And our specialty was chronic illness. And so I took care of the, the emotional piece of it. Uh, I did have someone request that I do this today because there are so many now, so many of us, and I've noticed that many of the people that are suffering from these chronic illnesses that can't be detected, that um, uh, can't be diagnosed, that have a really hard time finding out what it is, and once they do figure out what they think it is, it's hard to treat it. The stress that comes from that is uh, uh, goes beyond what I would term the word stress. So we're going to use this as our topic today to really take a look at how Rapid Eye works on all levels of the being. So if we look at, at the current situation with chronic illness, I've noticed that it is it largely hits young women in their um, maybe like 30s, it maybe starts late 20s, early 30s, and can go through the to 40s. But women in their 30s particularly are getting slammed with this. And autoimmune disease, you know, there's a lot of controversy around that. Does the body actually, is it, mis, is it misnamed? Does the body actually attack itself? You know, it almost seems like, like that, that wouldn't be something the body would do. So there's a lot of misunderstanding, misinformation, and tons of frustration, but particularly betrayal by those of you that are suffering from these chronic illnesses. The deep sense of betrayal that comes from having doctors not not recognize what it is, not take it seriously, not take the time to really research it and understand what's happening to you. Um, the cost of healthcare, because often you have to step out of the traditional medical model now with what's happening with these particular current chronic illnesses. Thank you, I see lots of people joining. Stepping out of the medical model means often stepping out of insurance. And naturopathic medicine is, can be extremely expensive. So we have the betrayal of the medical system, the finances, our family. Very often when families work or have dealing with someone that has these kinds of chronic illnesses, they will sometimes look at them sideways. Like, uh, you were fine last week, what's wrong today? Or you look fine to me, right? Because someone doesn't look sick. They, often these illnesses, they you, unless you've had them for a number of years, you really don't look sick. Uh, you don't look sick, why are you acting sick? And again, they can be very cyclical. So one week you may be absolutely really pretty good. And then the next week, boom, you slammed again. And the symptoms can be really severe. And so what's come to my attention is the fact that there is a tremendous sense of betrayal, betrayal by your own body, betrayal by the system, the doctors, the medical field, um, family, and particularly people that have been diagnosed with what we call Lyme disease. There are uh, lots of um, doctors and, and people who don't even recognize it, who say it doesn't exist. And yet there are a number of people that are suffering from it. So it's really a, a huge pot of confusion, betrayal, and again, let's go back to that stress. Why is it that some people get these illnesses and others don't? So, and they get hit in their 30s. Very often what happens in our childhood, right, will get stuffed and the brain actually doesn't have even the capacity to actually process it um, when it's happening. That's often what becomes PTSD. And PTSD can manifest itself as chronic illness. It can cause the body to go into illness because this stress and this trauma has not been processed and it sits in clusters in the brain and it registers in the cells of the body. And so stress, trauma, abuse, um, loss, grief, all of these things that have not been processed because either they, they, they weren't addressed, there wasn't the proper help, people didn't recognize it, whatever the reason is, these unprocessed emotions and feelings and experiences can sit in the body and fester and then cause uh, an immune response. It can weaken the immune system and then a complete cascade of events can go on biologically. 
And so women in their 30s, and there are men as well, and I'm not discounting that at all. I'm just saying in my experience, the majority of the people that I have seen that are suffering from these autoimmune diseases have been women in their 30s and 40s. But it usually starts to show up in the 30s. That's when all these years of repression, suppression, and the body not being able to handle with the unpro handle the unprocessed uh, feelings and emotions and thoughts, right? So thoughts have been continuing to um, control our way of being that came from the stress and the trauma. So thoughts that came from the abuse, thoughts that came from, from the grief, Thoughts that came from um, the dysfunctional family continue, if they haven't been addressed and changed, they continue to feed the repressed trauma and stress in the body. So thoughts along with the actual impression of the experience that all create specific emotions and feelings, they all come together as this toxic recipe that causes the body to go into this immune response that will cascade into these particular illnesses and they are chronic because there's so many layers of them we get very busy dealing with the physical aspect of it because it's so overwhelming it's the thing that gets the attention right i mean your body is miserable you're sick you, you feel completely betrayed by it because one day you're fine and you can't you can't make a plan. You don't know next week can I really make that trip? Can I can I actually get a job and keep it? And the stress level adds to the absolute trauma involved in these illnesses because you can't plan your life. You you let people down. You start to feel even worse about yourself. So all of these all of these these disappointments and betrayals just continue to add to the fuel of the illness and what we do with rapid eye when we're dealing with this kind of situation is take it all the way back to birth we take it back to the beginning because that's where it began when we were born into the family dynamic that we have we take on the dna and we're little sponges and we take on the energy and, the, and we are influenced tremendously through DNA and through the environment that we're being raised in. And so with Rapid Eye, we go back to birth and we start clearing. We start clearing the very original programs that were implanted. And then we go through the child developmental stages and we go through all the times in the childhood where these implants and these imprints and these impressions were made that, that put the body into level of stress. And we go through the process of getting to the deeper levels. And the thing about rapid eye that is so important to understand is that, well, it's not just rapid eye, but our, our very way of being in the world. We, we tend to focus on one aspect of ourselves or another. And it puts us out of balance. We are physical beings. We are biological beings. And when our body is, is really functioning at its optimum, we are superstars. And when it's not, everything falls apart. And that's the piece about chronic illness that, that is so devastating, is that we, we know that our body has to keep going, and we know that we need to get it in order. However, it's not happening no matter what people are trying to do, no matter what kind of medications, no matter what kind of treatments, it still continues. And that's the piece that feels so betrayal and frustrating. However, one of the reasons that happens is because we're being so... Um, super hyper focus on the body we've got to recognize that we are also emotional beings if you go out a, a couple of feet in your field there's an emotional level and that's just as important as that physical level the the emotional body gets saturated the emotional field gets saturated with emotions and feelings that are unprocessed and when that field gets saturated those toxic energies will bleed over into the body so the body starts taking the overload from the emotional field that has not been processed. And then you go a couple of feet out to that, and there's the mental field. And these are the thoughts that we've been taught from birth, that we've gotten from the experiences that we've had, and that, that keep getting um, uh, reinforced through the chronic illness. right? Of not, so if someone grew up with feeling not good enough, 
because let's say they were abused. And now here they are in this in this illness situation where they can't get a job, they can't keep their word, they can't do the things that they they could do before. All that does is support that, that core belief of not good enough. So that mental field, all those thoughts, support the toxins flooding into the emotional field that have those toxins flooding into the body. So the body gets environmental toxins, it gets the emotional toxins, and it becomes an overload in the body. And the immune system goes crazy. So then you go a couple of feet out from the mental field and you have the spiritual body. And it's really difficult to get from a sick body all the way out there to the spiritual field and actually feel it and activate it and have it work for you. It's challenging, but it's not important. It's not impossible. Because until we start to recognize that chronic illness and these autoimmune diseases that I believe are misnamed, but they're, that's what we call them now, autoimmune disease. And these illnesses that so many young women are, are manifesting now that seem unmanageable and unhealable. It's time for us all to recognize that they are real. They are phenomenally devastating. And they must, must, must be dealt with on all four levels. We have to recognize what the body needs and then do whatever we possibly can to move out into the emotional field and clear all of that stuff out. That's where the rapid eye came in when I was working five years in that clinic. I did a tremendous amount of work to help people just release and dump out the toxins in the emotional body. So the doctors were detoxing on the physical level and now they're detoxing on the emotional level. And then what we're doing on the mental level is reframing. We're learning new ways of thinking so that the emotional body continues to grow in, in, a, in a, uh, a positive, powerful way, which then supports the body's healing. And then, of course, that spiritual piece is everything. If you look at the two ends of that, you've got the spiritual and the physical, the two bookends. And they are, if you, if you really use the example of bookends, they are equally important. So finding something, doesn't matter what it is, but something that feeds your spiritual body and focusing on it as much as you possibly can is going to make a tremendous difference in that mental field, the emotional field, and then how the body responds. So the main thing I work on with people that have these chronic illnesses is that first sense of betrayal. It's usually the first thing they present is how betrayed they feel by the illness itself, their family, the medical system, the financial system and how nobody seems to care really nobody nobody gets it and so we work with clearing that betrayal because if we carry no matter it doesn't matter how real or true it is of course it's it's true what these people are experiencing and feeling but the more we carry that the more we'll attract that the law of attraction being a very real thing if we are living in this state of betrayal and we're vibrating at that rate because we've been slammed for the last three or four years of these experiences. We become a magnet for more of those experiences to come. So the whole idea between rapid eye working with those of you that have these kinds of illnesses is that it stops the pattern. It stops the magnetic attraction to over and over again, uh, over and over. I've gone to 15 doctors. I've had uh, 200 different treatments. And it, the same thing keeps happening over and over again. It works for a little while, and then it doesn't work anymore. Or my family keeps thinking there's something that I'm crazy. Whatever it might be, those patterns that, that are happening, and they, they pick up momentum. The longer you're ill, have you noticed? I'm sure you have, because you're, you're experiencing it. The longer you have the illness, the, the faster and bigger the momentum seems to pick up of these patterns repeating themselves, and the experience is just continuing. Because you're, you're vibrating at that place of betrayal and, and um, despair. And it's making your magnet to, to more experiences, more people, more doctors that are going to respond that same way. So the first thing I want to really ingrain, if I can today, if this, if this little video can have any influence on those of you that are being so devastated by these illnesses, is to know that You do have the power, and you do have the strength 
to make this experience something completely different. And you're not alone. There are many of us in this world now who have loved ones that are going through this. That would be me. Plus having all those years of working with people love you. You're not alone. And know that when you're tempted to become completely consumed with what's happening on the physical level, that that's the time to reach out to someone like me, someone in the field of healing, who can help you shift your attention and your focus of power to your emotional body and get that healed, to your mental body and get that healed, to your spiritual body and make that powerful enough to create a balance in the body that starts to give the body the message, oh, you're okay, you can start to heal now, you can come into balance. Because it's very important to know deep in your heart that there is absolutely no condition that the body can have that cannot be changed into absolute optimum health. Register that as a real truth. No matter what condition the body is in, it can be changed into optimal health. It simply takes, not easily, but simply takes, the dedication, the devotion, and the attention to all four parts of your being. Because we are made to be whole. We're made to be healthy. And when the atrocities that have happened to us get cleared and disappeared and made as if they never were, the body then comes into a place of alignment with the truth of who you are. And the truth of who you are is that you are whole, you are healed, and you are here to present life. Regardless of how far away from that truth you feel, that is still the truth. And when you work with someone like me, when you work with a healer who can look at you and see that truth, can hold the space of who you really are. The betrayal starts to fade away. The resistances start to fade away. And the body starts to recognize that it is part of the whole system. And that the system is now healing enough to support it. So please know that you are not alone. That there are many of us that recognize and understand what you're going through. And... I would invite you to seriously consider finding ways to refocus your attention on healing the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual part of your being so that your body can then become free to move into a state of homeostasis and healing. Another thing that I've learned is that often these illnesses are can be as difficult as they are, and as often as people don't really want to hear this, they can end up being a great spiritual gift because they can force you to go to the place where you do find that spiritual connection, where you do find your spirit, and you can take comfort in that place. I have a client right now who's coming to my mind who she is healthy and functioning now. And she was almost dead. We didn't know that she was going to make it much of the time. And she is healthy and functional, having relationships, keeping her job. And one of the biggest things we worked on was her spiritual strength, because it was tremendous. Know that as extreme as your physical illness is, that's how extreme your power in your spiritual body is. And it bookends. If you are really, really sick, that tells me that you are really, really powerful as a spiritual being. And when that spiritual power gets deeply activated, then there is no possibility other than having the body come into alignment with it. So please know that there are dormant and hidden powers within you that you're not aware of. Partly because the illness is 
He's stealing that awareness from you. But you can go beyond that. And probably can't do it on your own. So please call me, email me, or contact someone else in the healing field that you resonate with and you trust. And tell them that you want your emotional, mental, and spiritual powers to become fully activated so that your body gets the support and the power and the light that it needs to remember because it remembers very clearly its true state of being. All right. I bless you all, and I do hope to hear from some of you, because this is a journey that I believe is intended to take with another. This is a journey to take with someone that can hold the vision of your wholeness. And I would like to offer that to you. And I know that there are rapid eye technicians all over the world, all over this country, who can do that as well. Hold you in your wholeness. Because it's there. It never goes away. Okay. One more thing I'm going to say before I leave that I meant to mention earlier. If uh, if you want to start researching someone that really gets the spiritual and the physical, Deepak Chopra is 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 an old time expert. Deepak Chopra is a doctor, and he addresses very often the physical body and the spiritual aspect of of how they work together. And one of the things he talks about is the fact that our body regenerates. He I just read the other day he has a list of different organs that regenerate and what time, you know, I believe he said the liver was every seven months. There's different parts of the body that regenerate it on different time frames. But every year, we have a completely new body. Every cell in our body regenerates now every year. It used to be every seven years, he said. But things have accelerated so quickly that now we're regenerating. We have a new body every year. So I'm posing a question to you. If you have a new body every year, then how come that new body keeps manifesting the same old illness? It's because when the cells regenerate, they regenerate within the pattern of the thoughts that you're still holding. The cells are regenerating, but your thoughts are not. You're still running the same thought pattern. You're still running the same emotional uh, energy and infusing the new cells with that. So even though every year your whole body has a chance to start new and be completely regenerated and whole and healthy, it keeps manifesting the same illness because the thought patterns keep telling the new cells that they're sick because the old cells are sick. It's like an inheritance. The, the new cells inherit the old thought process from the, from the old cells. So... To me, that's one of the most encouraging, exciting things that I've come to realize about chronic illness is that you have the opportunity to infuse new cells with new thoughts so that they do not inherit the old illness from the cells that are, that are, that are being recycled. But we've got to get to the thought patterns. We've got to change the thoughts. If you were an addict for many years and you're healed now, you're not, you're, you're not actively addicted, but you never did change the thought patterns that you had as an addict, then those thoughts are giving your body lots of messages. And even though every year you have new cells, they're playing the same old story because you're playing the same old story. Know that your cells are a reflection of your thought process. So that's exciting news. I'm going to leave you with that one. Every year your body regenerates. So if you find somebody that can help you change your thought patterns and clean up that emotional body, then those new cells that are coming in have the opportunity to sing a whole new song and create a whole new level of health and well-being in your body. So it's all about programming. So let's find a way to program these new cells for pure health, power, and strength. Enjoy. 
time to be happy. It's time to be happy. Okay. All right, everybody. Bless you. I hope you have a miraculous week. And know that I love you. And I will see you next Tuesday morning on Tuesday for Paula. Email me if you'd like. It's Paula K. Bronte. Just the letter K at gmail.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.